John DeJulius. Welcome back to Paper Napkin Wisdom. I'm so thrilled to have you back on the show. Thank you. It's, a, it's thrilling to be back and asked back. Yeah, well, you, you were one of my faves, and I said that in the email asking you to come back. So I'm really excited about the napkin that you shared. Can you, can you read it out loud to everybody listening right now? Absolutely. Uh, live, living an extraordinary life. Okay, so why did you choose that to share with me today? You know, so, so uh, I am uh, strictly a, a one-trick pony here. I am a, a customer service expert. Um, you know, people call and ask about uh, sales or leadership or social media. I'm not the guy. There's way better people. And, and even this topic, you know, isn't, I'm going to say, isn't necessarily my expertise. But, uh, you know, so, so from creating the, the, the customer service stuff, I, I applied it to my personal life. So one of our, our, our 10 commandments in customer service is we help companies create a customer service vision statement. And so that's what this is for my personal life is, is, is what's my personal purpose statements, you know, and what's going to get me out of bed? What's going to be my compass? And so, you know, about 10 years ago, I, I, I took a lot of time and, and worked on it and I, I wrote out, you know, uh, you know, my personal purpose to, is to live an extraordinary life. And, and, and you know, that, that's half of it, as you know. And, you know, so why? Why would anyone want to live an extraordinary life? And, and, and there's two parts of this. One, you could just say it. Yeah, that sounds great. Now move on. Um, but as, as, as we'll talk about, it's the requirements and the checks and balances to what I need to do to know that I'm, 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 I'm achieving that. Um, is, is, is the harder part, right? So, so why I want to live a, a, an extraordinary life is not so, you know, I have, you know, bigger houses, bigger bank accounts, more cars, more vacations. But I have realized through many different people in my life, um, if I live an extraordinary life and do all the things that, you know, requires me to, to that I need to do, um, countless others will as well. I, I think this is really important also, and you're not saying it, so I want to challenge you on it. Yeah. It's not just about declaring the vision statement, but it's, it's creating a transparency around the accountability of that, right? I mean, you're saying it, and darn it, that means that you got to show up with this. Right. You're holding yourself really accountable in every part of your life to be extraordinary. Right. And, 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 and you know, I want to make it clear, uh, you know, I'm not. That's my, my goal, that's my compass. But to your point, you know, when we, I, I've done this exercise and we help other people do it, it's like, all right, what's your personal purpose? All right, so you create it, whatever it is, and that, you know, sounds sexy, it sounds great, but that doesn't mean you are. And so, you know, so for me to live an extraordinary life, you know, what do I need to do to live an extraordinary life, to bring my A game every day? And you know, that, that goes from everything, who, who I'm hanging out with, and you know, one of my favorite quotes ever is, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And you know, I say that to people, some people that, that, that it, it insults or they get mad, do something about it. You know, if you don't like being the average of the person you, you know, hang out with, you know, that's your fault. You can change it you know, tomorrow. But it's, what am I feeding my brain? Um, you know, from, from uh, motivation to, you know, am I listening to Howard Stern or CNN or am I listening to, you know, reading, you know, the, the paper napkin book and stuff that's inspiring. Um, so it's a health. It's what am I feeding? And, you know, the whole thing with, with you know, whatever your, your personal purpose statement is, live an extraordinary life so countless others do. Um, it, it is something that you have to, you know, you, you really have to look at it and, and measure. So a lot of people will say, you know, what I do is none of your business. And what I mean by that is if I, you know, want to have three donuts for breakfast today, you know, mind your own business, right? You know, it's, it's not your life. Well, listen, if there's any, you know, connection between me and you, if you're a coworker, a relative, a, a, a customer, anything, well, then it is your business. Because if I'm eating three donuts, you know, on a consistent basis, right? What's that going to do to me? I'm going to come home tonight and want to collapse on the couch because I'm just exhausted. My kids want to play catch with me. No, no, not tonight. Not tonight. I may be snapping angrier. So, you know, and, and you use that, you know, the donut analogy and everything of, you know, who we're hanging out with, you know, and, and, and all those things. So, you know, I've created something that holds me accountable 
personally and professionally because, you know, we all have seeds of potential. And the seeds of potential that we don't grow to their fullest potential, we didn't cheat our, our us. We cheated all the people that are dependent on us. And if you think about the greats, what if Martin Luther King, uh, Walt Disney, uh, Howard Schultz, uh, you know, Nelson Mandela, Oprah Winfrey, whoever, said, eh, I'm just going to be average. I'm, I'm just going to, you know, do whatever. How much different would our lives be? And, you know, to a lot of people, we're them. We're that people. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I think that there's a, there's, a, there's a real strong link here between this idea around being extraordinary in these little tasks that we do, right, and being extraordinary and having an extraordinary impact. I mean, there's a clear path and you're drawing that clear path. And one of the things, you know, so, so you, you sent me and reminded me about this chapter in your book, The Customer Service Revolution, chapter 12, I think it is, right? Where it's yeah. living an extraordinary life. And, and you say again that you're a customer service expert looking behind you, logos of some of the best brands in the world right now that come to you for customer service guidance. And you have this chapter 12 about living an extraordinary life and why we as individuals can't just say that we did our best. That's not good enough. And, and you're like, you're kind of hard on it, right? I hate that word. Like, don't, don't my managers, leaders, don't, don't ever say that to me. I, you know, that's just a cop out. That's like, you know, because who can't argue with it? You know, why didn't we, you know, accomplish this? Why? Hey, hey I did my best. Oh, well, therefore, okay. No, I don't want your best right? Your best is what you were capable of doing in the past. And every great accomplishment, every great team, individual, you know, when they did something, it, it was like, it was at the time unbelievable. And, you know, for you and me, that might mean we, you know, had, had to work, you know, 72 straight hours, seven weeks, uh, you know, whatever that might be, knocking on doors, getting rejected. But we were going to find, and we made phone calls and, 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 uh, uh, to people that we had no right call, but they answered. And, you know, one of them turned out to be something that, you know, helped us and they gave us the advice or, you know, broke the, the opportunity. And, you know, it just, I, I don't want your best, right? I mean, that's not what we're here for. You know, we're here to make, you know, an extraordinary difference. And do the impossible. We're here to forge something that never happened before, did something that's never existed before, create value where value didn't exist before. Right? Yeah. And and that, and that's beyond our best. I, correct. You, you got it. So I want to, I want to test this because somewhere out there, there's somebody who runs a small business, a mom and pop shop where they, uh, they sell whatever they do. Or they, they're just starting out and they're struggling and they're like, what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? My best isn't good enough. What does that mean in, in the, in the, at the beginning of a business, in a small well, business? So this is, you know, delving more into your expertise, but this really is about leadership, right? And so I have this personal purpose statement to remind me of my obligation. And, and when I chose, when all of us chose to be an entrepreneur or a leader, we gave up the right to make excuses. And, you know, and we also understood that, you know, or hopefully we understood that it, we weren't, you know, we wanted to be that guy, that woman, that person. And it wasn't always going to be rosy and the, the economy wasn't always going to be booming and the busy bus wasn't always going to be pulling up in front of our doors, letting hundreds of people out. And so, you know, so then it gets tough and we have obstacles uh, personally and professionally and the recession hits and our key salesperson leaves us and we lose our contract and all those things. And so what this is for is how do I, you know, I, I, we all have a tendency that we want to stick our head in the sand. You, 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 your story, um, my, you know, you know, my, my, I've had, you know, a lot of obstacles in my life. Who has it? And, but man, if we stick our head in the sand, we just betrayed all the people that work for us because the reason why they're working for us and they gave up options elsewhere and maybe even better deals on paper elsewhere is because they believed in our vision of what we were building together. And now Things aren't going to, so I want to stick my head in the sand and say, woe is me. Screw that. I mean, I can't. So I got to bring my A game every day. And that, you know, maybe being, you know, high morale and, 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 and believing in the people around me. I can't show them that I'm panicked. But we've also, all of us listening, 
I've also sat in the end of my driveway and looking at my house saying, shit, am I going to have this in six months? And am I going to, you know, are, are 150 employees going to have to be, you know, dusting off their resume because, you know, we're going to go under. And then I think about it and say, I can't feel like that. You know, that, that's self-pity crap. And it's my job to regroup, regroup and remind why I got into it. It wasn't to make more money and have freedom. It was to make an impact in, in customers and, and, and employees and the community. And we are doing those things. Yeah, and isn't it like, so there, there was a lot that you just said there, John. So I want to break it down for people listening because what many people may not understand is before the world's best brands were on a wall behind you, before you were the customer service expert, you and Stacy opened a hair salon, right? 24 like, years ago, last week. Yeah, I saw the picture and it's, and it's amazing, right? So 24 years ago, it was a hair salon. Four chairs, 900 square feet. That's it. Yeah. Right? So people need to understand, start small, think big, can mean four chairs, 900 square feet. And now you're the customer service expert to the best brands in the world. Right. Yeah. yeah, it was just sticking to a vision. And, and, and I, wish, I, I wish I could tell you it was all a plan. You know, if you would have told me 24 years ago that th that 900 square feet, four chairs would still be open, in, in I'd be like, oh, God, that, you know, I, I, didn't, I was just wanted to, you know, figure out how to keep those doors open, which were a struggle. Um, and then when we started realizing after a while that we had something, um, then, you know, our, our dreams and our visions got bigger and bigger, but we never thought in a million years that, you know, when we first started, we just knew we had something that we were really passionate about that we thought was different. And, you know, our, our world was, you know, very small, but we were making an impact and it, it allowed us to, to, to widen that reach. So let's think about that now. When you're in the middle, and I think we hear this a lot, right? In leadership with entrepreneurs with, with high level leadership in organizations, you get so stuck in the grind, solving that problem, getting that next person in the seat, right? That becomes the focus. And doesn't your focus on living an extraordinary life and being extraordinary in all these things every single day force you to look up at the stars a little and remember what you're really going after? I mean, isn't that really what's happening in this, as part of this exercise? And it is. And whether you're an entrepreneur or, or a dad or a mom or, or, or a leader, I, I love speaking to entrepreneur classes because I will when, when before they're entrepreneurs. And I'll say, you know, who, you know, who, who wants to, you know, open their own business to, to have the freedom, uh, make more money and, and, and come and go as you please. You know, and at least 50, 60 percent of people raise their hand and the other 30 or 40, you know, are BSing, you know. And, and what I try to tell them is, you know, none of that's going to happen initially and it may be 20 years if you're lucky and i go so if that's your goal right and you do you know and you will you know have those moments where you're like oh my god like i'm, I'm working 24 hours a day and and i'm i'm not i haven't been able to take a paycheck in, in three weeks and i got employees who i have to pay who are bitching that i'm cheap Right. And, and at least they're getting a paycheck and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you, and you, you know, you get, you get those things. And so when you're sitting in your driveway, my goal was at first, you know, what was our goal to, 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 you know, do Well, we thought we could bring something to the beauty industry that wasn't there. So enhance the quality of lives around us. That was the company purpose. And you know, whose lives guests, uh, uh, employees and community. So when I'm hitting that, you know, you know, feel like I'm drowning, I take a step back and say, are we accomplishing our goals? Yeah, you know, we bring something pretty cool to the, the customer experience that not too many people in our industry or any industry do. Um, we offer things, you know, to our employees that they can't get uh, elsewhere. And then, you know, we've made an impact. All of a sudden that rejuvenates me, you know, to want to go on. But if my only, you know, goal was to have more money in, the, in, in my bank account and have more vacation days on my calendar, well, you know, then I would have thrown in the towel saying this was BS. I, you know, had it better when I was working for someone else. So that's the example of the business mission, but your personal mission. And again, I, I want to make sure I'm not living. I'm, I'm not extraordinary. It is my goal to. 
So you've seen uh, some of the stuff that I've created that's in the book uh, of the accountability of the personal, um, what I have to, you know, feed my brain, feed myself, you know, parenting, being a role model, raising their self-esteem. So that's an audit. And when I pay more attention to those things, my needle is, is more north. Um, than it is when I don't pay attention to those things. And when I realize I'm not living an extraordinary life, which, you know, um, is more often than I want to admit, I go to that, 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 that those uh, accountability things, and I can immediately see what is deficient and that I need to feed myself. So I can bring that A game back to work or back to my kids or back to my friends. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I think that, I think that's really important also to, to make sure that people understand and hear the alignment between your personal vision statement and the business, the business vision statement, right? I mean, the visions of the two are really simpatico. I mean, they're not the same words, but they're really well aligned, right? Yeah. And if we get burned out personally, and that's what really what this is for is, you know, if we get burned out personally or we get off the track, um, you know, the business is going to suffer. And, you know, listen, we all have people in our lives. And, and you know, I, I got a buddy that was in my wedding 20 some years ago. Um, I was in his wedding. Great guy. And we will hook up once a year. But that's all I can do because he's not the type of person, you know, I need to be around, you know, on a consistent basis. He's not going to be the one saying, hey, you want to go for a workout You in the morning? You want to go for a run? Um, he's not going to be the type of person that says, Hey, it's 10 o'clock. I didn't, you tell, um, your kids, you'd be home. He's the type of person that says, Hey, let's go knock, you know, another, you know, a round out, let's hit some more bars. And you know, all those things affect us and what we do and who we surround ourselves with. And you know, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, um, I am, if I'm, if I'm, uh, um, now I'm, now I'm forgetting the quote. But if I am measured by the people I surround myself with, I'm a champion. Like the people I allow in my inner circle, professionally and personally, are just amazing people. It's a small group, but they're, they're just really, really good. The people that run my three companies, they're great. They've been with me over 20 years. They're just really good people. Um, the only thing I'm bragging about is how, how good of a job I've done, you know, I guess filtering them. I'm really picky on who I'm gonna let impact me because everyone affects us negative people affect us positive people affect us and we, you know we got to avoid those negative influences yeah and, and and that's a really deliberate thing you know and i, I want to i think it's really important for people to hear this too that there's never really a moment off from being a leader in those contexts right i mean it's kind of like parenting when you're when you're a dad you're a dad forever when you're mom you're mom forever that's it it's that's the job Right. Yeah. And it's that it's the way for leaders too. this idea where kids are putting up their hands and saying, I want to be an entrepreneur for all this freedom. That is total BS. Leadership is something we got to take responsibility. And, and it's a serious business. It is. And, you know, someone taught me this, you know, you get pulled over by a cop and your kids are in the car. What you tell that cop is, 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 is you know, if you're bullshitting the cop and your kids know you're not late for school or an appointment, I mean, that, someone taught me that, and I was like, oh, my God, you're right. That's teaching the kids it's okay to lie. But, you know, you know and this is, my, this is my own philosophy, but, you know. Stakes are high enough, it's okay to lie. Right, right, you know. And, 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 and so, you know, it, it's the same thing of what we do at, at our companies and what we say about clients after they hang up. Maybe I treated the client great on the phone, but when I hung up, I'm like, oh, my God, what a – well, that's sending messages to my team. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really important. So, you know, in, in chapter 12 of the book, you talk about, you break it down, personal and professional, and you've got three buckets in each, right? And, and you call them drivers, right? These are the drivers for you personally. And then under personal, you've got personal, family, and health. And professional, you've got professional development, business, and team. And I think it's really interesting. One of the things that just jumped out to me is that you separated business and team. Why? You know, so, so and, and those are, are my choices, you know, yours should be, you know, whatever, but those are the, the three things in each personally and professionally that I have to make sure I'm, I'm watering, right? 
Um, so I got, you know, the, my, the team is my direct reports, my leaders um, that report to me. And sometimes I could be guilty of everything, the bad boss, where I'm saying, why haven't you? Why, where's this? What's this? Blah, blah, blah. And, and then their morale gets down. And then I'm saying, man, I got a bunch of, you know, bad people with me and low morale. And, you know, listen, uh, culture reflects leadership. And I hate that quote because it's right. And I hate that quote because every time I complain about my, my culture, which is really my 12 or 15 direct reports, that, that quote always, I'm like, all right. And I look in the mirror and say, you know what? I haven't been around. Or when I have been around, I'm saying, why haven't you? Why? I have not picked them up. I have not been the leader that I, I can be where I'm bringing that vision and, and how they, the reason why I have this vision is because I got you on this team. And if I, if I didn't have you on the team, I would never think we could go and, and do this, this, and this. And making you realize how important it is. So, you know, I, I have to separate those things from a team for being a leader to them and then the businesses as a whole and, you know, creating the strategy and the opportunities and, you know, all those things. So somewhere on out there right now, someone's listening and, and, and they're not getting the results right now that they need, right? They, they've, they've got a company and, they're, and they're, their targets are, let's say, 100 units a day and they're doing 50 units a day and they're looking at the team around them and they're going like, how come we're not debt getting it? We used to debt get it and we're not there now. And they're, and they're going through this stress, this pressure, and they're, going, and they're listening and they're saying, well, but I have to drive forward. We're not where we need to be. I have to say, why aren't we? What do you say to that person? So, you know, creating a personal uh, purpose statement with the drivers behind it isn't the end all. It's not going to fix sales. It's like, all this is, is to figure out the only person leaders should motivate is themselves. And it is a 24 hour, a, 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 you know, hour a day, seven day a week job to try to motivate John Hardy Julius III. And when I do, when I do, and I bring that passion in my A game, and, and I'm healthy, and I'm focused, and I'm amped up, I have so much less issues, morale issues, cultural problems. I got, I got people rallied behind because I'm contagious. When I don't, and I'm woe is me, and I've been traveling so much, and cash flow's bad, and my kid got in trouble for school last night, I start got, getting morale issues all over the place. So this, all this is really designed is how I can, you know, be closer to the best version of myself than uh, I, I am if I'm not paying attention to it. And, you know, again, it's personally, you know, it's being a better parent. It's, you know, being, you know, calling up my friend who I haven't spoke to in a while. And I remember the last time he told me, you know, something was going on in his relationship. And, you know, what kind of friend have I that I haven't, you know, called him up and followed up with in three months to see how that's going. So it, it, it's, it's little and big things, mostly little things that really add up. But if I know, I, I, you know, everybody else is going to perform better if I'm clicking on all cylinders. I think it's really important. And I think that's what's, what's really incredible about this whole thing is how focused you are on making sure that you are personally, that you, you've elevated your personal accountability around being extraordinary. And, and, and that, Starts with you every single time I've said this, John. You said, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Right? So you're admitting that you're not there yet, but you're not losing focus on what you need to be. Yeah, you're absolutely right. One of my favorite exercises that I was taught, I, I don't even know where I was taught in an extra in a class or something, workshop that I do, um, that I share is I carry it in my little uh, billfold here, um, and it's on my mirror in, in my bathroom. But it's the one in, in, in can I back up? Keep going. Okay. So I have this in, in my mirror um, in my, my bathroom. And it's the exercise, did I reach my fullest potential? And I love this. And so you write a, 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 a you know, sentence or two on each of the key people in your life. So with your spouse, did I reach my fullest potential today? And, you know, your children, 
you know, your, your customers, your, your friends, your community, your, your, your employees that report to you. And so, you know, I'll give an example, uh, you know, the, the one for my, my children. Um, and remember, this isn't me. Don't be impressed. This is who I want to be. But, so, you know, my version of how I answered this is, did I utilize the potential I had inside of me today to make my ch children feel that they were the most special human being ever born? That they could accomplish anything because they believe in their own ability and have phenomenal self-esteem because of the way I made them feel. Did they know their dad was so proud of them and that there was no doubt how much I loved them? It was obvious to all. So, so I try to read this every day. Um, again, it's on my mirror. It's, it's in my you know, billfold here. I probably read it three days a week, um, hopefully more. But I will tell you that when I read that, I am more present you know, in the next interactions with them to try to be more like that. Um, and, and so that really works. I got the same thing for, you know, my significant other or for, you know, my, my employees. Uh, that's what I want to be. It's beginning with the end in mind, right? And th that's, that, I do have that potential inside of me, all right? We all do. Now, and it's about pulling that future version of yourself into the present moment. Exactly. With every intention, with every fiber of your being, acting from that place today. Right. 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 So when I read that, I'm closer. I realize instead of just calm and say, why didn't you bring in the garbage cans last night like I asked you? You know, you know, I, 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 I take more time. So these are just little advertisement things to remind me of, 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 of my, the best version of myself, the potential of it. And hopefully I'm, I'm closer north when I do it. You said something really interesting. You said little advertising things, right? Right. And I think that's, I think that's the, the today's world. Too many people, I think, you know, we hear this entrepreneur ADD, we hear this, oh, it's so, I'm so distracted, I'm so distracted, I'm so distracted. I, I think that we've always been distracted, but it's what we choose to be distracted by. You're choosing to make sure that in your distractions, you've got these little advertisements of who yeah. you want to be. Right. Right? Yeah. And they catch us. Right. No, that's, yeah. that's really kind of cool to think about it that way. Now, there's also a piece of this and you say, you, you talk about service from a different point of view and, and you tie it into this, this vision of being extraordinary and living an extraordinary life. An interesting way, and you say, each of us has the ability to impact thousands of people's lives through providing genuine care for others, right? Whether it's called customer service or human service. And I think that's really profound. I mean, isn't the job of caring for our families, our spouse, our, our team, isn't that also just service? It's being of service, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and so that's, you know, the, the, the definition to a customer service revolution is a radical overthrow of conventional business mentality designed to transform the way customers and employees are treated. All right, that's the first paragraph. The second sentence to it, is the one most important to me, right? Which, you know, you know, affects the way we are at home, you know, to our neighbors and in the community. That's the part I love. Then I end with, and you know, gives the business higher sales, morale, brand loyalty, thus making price irrelevant. But I mean, if we teach this at work, you know, I, I, the, the highest compliment I've ever gotten, and I'm sure you have, is, you know, I'll have a parent come into me and introduce themselves and their kid's been working for me for, and I say kid, I mean anyone under 30. <laughs> you know, they're, 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 their son or daughter's been working for me for a year or so, and they'll introduce you and they'll say, I want to know what you did to my daughter. She's not the same person, you know, that lived here, you know, six or eight months ago. That is like the greatest, uh, you know, reward, pay, bonus I can get. Because, you know, listen, I don't want people that, that treat others um, better in order to get a better tip, a promotion, a bonus, whatever that may be. I want it because that's just who you are. You know, it's, you know, you know, it's human service. I want you to be nicer to the stranger in the elevator as a result and say, dude, those are cool shoes. You know, and, you know, to see that guy smile, he walks out with a, with, with a little step, you know, bounce in his step because, you know, a total stranger made his day in an elevator ride. I, 
and, and, and it reminds me, what you just said reminds me of the fact that, you know, this, this morning, my, my son was the MC at a thing at the school, you know, a 10 year old kid. And he was spoke, he spoke beautifully. It was so much fun to sit there and listen yeah. to it. Awesome. And one of the things that I kept on telling him is son, remember that no one will remember the words that you share, but everyone will remember how you made them feel. Right. Right. And you were mouthing the words. Yeah. Like you were, you, like you're mouthing those words. And by being extraordinary, do we not like leave this lasting feeling with everybody around us that they can be too? Yeah, I mean that, that, that you know, so, so you know, I, I have many layers to this and I'm not telling everyone that they have to. So my personal purpose statement is live an extraordinary life so, so countless others do. But that doesn't necessarily tell me what I have to do in each moment. So I have a, 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 a moment, if you will, uh, statement, and it, it's to uh, um, provide a positive, energizing moment. And that's something that fits my personality in exactly what you say. So when I walk through the corporate offices, we have three um, you know, companies that share, and it's the John Roberts Spots, the, the, the Julius Group, and it's the Believe in Dreams, which is our, a, a nonprofit charity. And I'm walking through each, and sometimes I'm walking through and I have to get on a call and you know, I don't say hi to anyone, right? And you know, I don't realize the impact that they can have, especially when I'm not here that often. So, you know, I, I try to remember, you know, I am capable of giving a, a positive, energizing moment. And that just might be, you know, stopping, you know, at, at a desk and saying hi to Joyce and asking her how her, her weekend was and genuinely looking in her eyes and waiting for her answer, right? That's, that's you, know, you know, that's an energizing moment, especially when it's coming from someone who, who they perceive as, as important, but that you're making them feel important, that you know their name and that you know that, you know, their daughter had a recital this weekend or whatever that was. Yeah, I think that's really great. And I think it's really important. And, and I'm, I'm just taking the picture, right? Of you walking through the three offices, you know, if, if you were a boat going through, going through that environment, you're leaving a wake, right? Whether yeah. you intend to or not, that's you're leaving a wake. Is it going to be a positive one or is it going to be a negative one? You know, my, my team likes to say that I shit rainbows when I walk in in the morning it's, it's that, it's that idea, right? Yeah, it is. And you know, but, but this is also, um, we have to hold ourselves accountable in an email, right? You send me an email and you might, you know, you know, you know, ask me, is there any chance we can have a call? I could say yes or no, or Nicole could handle it. Or what's an energizing positive moment, right? It is so good to hear from you. You know, blah, 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 you know, okay. I'd love to, you know, have a call with you or meet your, you know, associate or whatever that is. It takes five seconds longer to finish that. But like, you know, that's a burden I put on myself, you know, is I have to provide a positive energizing moment, right? In, in, I try to, in each interaction I have, instead of just saying, yes, no, Nicole can set that up. I mean, you know, what does yeah, that yeah. So how, how do you, uh, so give me an example, put yourself in the mindset, John, that you got it wrong. Like think of the last time when you didn't get it right. You were too rushed. Something happened. The kids were whatever, you know, beating each other up and you, you just weren't on your A game and you got it wrong. Describe the process by which you catch yourself and, and get yourself right for the next time. What does that look like? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm a, a, a father of three boys and... Um, so it's a calm, quiet place. Yes. In the Julius house. Yes. And uh, it, it happens a lot more times than, than I, I like to. And, and you know, it's, it's just about reevaluating how could I do it. And the hardest part is, you know, we all, we all be armchair quarterbacks. I could watch you overreact and say, here, if you just would have, but I'm not emotionally in that moment where it's the hundredth time and, you know. So it's just a trying to be proactive, uh, positive, but also not beat yourself up because you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be extraordinary. You're not going to deliver a, 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 a positive, energizing moment. And the reason why I have to put positive in that sentence is because no matter what, I provide an energizing moment. It's not always positive, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, people know I'm here. My kids know I'm home. You know, how I talk to them 
isn't energizing. I'm never quiet. I'm never like, you know, so I have to make sure that that, that energy could be, you know, um, gasoline, you know, or it could be oxygen. And so that's why, you know, the, 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 the two parts is energizing and moment isn't the difficulty. It's what I, how I make that energy come out. And that fits my personality and my, you know, so I'm not saying that should be anyone else's. But it's, it, it's about not beating yourself up, not knowing that, um, not, you know, thinking that, you know, I'm going to be, you know, uh, 10 for 10 today. Um, if, I, if I could just be a little better this hour than I was last hour, that's all. Um, I can't be perfect and I won't be perfect. But, you know, if I could just make progress, if I could eat a little better today than I did yesterday, and I'm healthier today, than I, that's all I can ask. And then if I make those choices often enough, I'm going to like where I'm at in three months, six months in those areas. John, does it get easy? Does that level of focus on being positive get easy or is it intentional every single day? Uh, a lot of the areas is, is easy. Um, you know, like, like, you know, teaching myself to always say something positive to someone, um, you know, but it's authentic. Like as soon as we got on the thing, I said, man, you look great you lose weight that you know i'm not making it up if you would have put on 20 pounds i wouldn't have said that to you right <laughs> but teaching yourself to just there's something positive you can say to everyone you know that's a nice shirt right love that love the shoes whatever you know and if, if you can't find anything you, you just tell them you know hope you enjoy the unseasonably warm weather so if i ever tell anybody to enjoy the weather i can't find anything on it. <laughs> but a lot of that stuff you just start training yourself to you know, look for good things and, and so not being so transactional. There's some things that I, I certainly um, really have to be uh, deliberate about, and that isn't being someone who just reacts in the moment because that's my natural tendency, and I need to process um, a lot of things so I am not so abrupt and you know, don't spin the negative energy. So I want to ask you a question from a different standpoint around this notion of, of being extraordinary so that other people can. Part of it, it feels to me that you have to give room to people to be extraordinary, right? Like you have, it's not you that's dominating everything. You've got to be it, but also leave room for other people, hold the door open so they can do something too. Oh God. Yeah. I, I mean, absolutely. And and, you know, the other thing is, you know, I think bios are kind of silly, right? Because bios are, you know, are, are high points. But we can do an unbio, right? And talk about our low points, which, you know, if that was your introduction of me, you know, today I could give you, you know, plenty enough stuff that people would all have turned off by now. And we, we, we can't get confused you know, so I'm going in a different direction, but you thought, you made me think of this, is our bio is really other people's accomplishments. None of us, none of us are self-made. That's, that's one of the, the most stupid thing. If you were raised by the wolves, well, then your bio is aimed at the wolves. They did something right. And, yeah. you know, so that's really important that, you know, the, the appreciation of, of the people who, who, who helped get you there that believed in you before you were believable, um, that you just, you know, you, you were successful because you didn't have the heart to let them down, not because you actually thought you could do it, but, you know, you, you didn't know why they, they, they believed in you. So it, it's things like that. It, 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 it's, it's remembering all the other people that allowed you to be extraordinary, that gave you the opportunity to be in this position. And now we owe it forward to, you know, bring our A game Right. And it goes back to we all have a, a Walt Disney, Howard Schultz, Steve Jobs, Oprah Winfrey in our life. Right. And someone was that for us. And now look where you're at today. Um, you owe that to the thousands of people that are dependent on you, the hundreds of thousands of people. Because, you know, what if you just decided today that you were going to, you know, call in your, your, your podcast and, and be 10 percent of what you're capable of being? How many people would have been ripped off? Um, by you, you know, not being the extraordinary interviewer, researcher, all those things, bringing the best talent that you think can help, you know, your audience be. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm actually really personally moved by something you said really quickly that you're only successful because you didn't have the heart to let other people down. Right. That's a really, I mean, that's a really big, big, big concept. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge, we could talk for hours just on that, but I, I can't forget about that. We can't, 
you know, sometimes we forget and we read our bios and pat ourselves on the back. Someone did that for us. Someone gave us that opportunity and a lot of people. You know, I don't care if it's a janitor in your school that kept the school clean and the heat on while you were going there. You know, have we thanked him? You know, there's big people in our lives, our parents, our teachers, our, our former bosses, and there's, you know, people that play behind the scenes. I mean, you know what? How, how much work goes in, and, and you probably could say the same thing. I'll show up at a speech and hopefully nail it. And when, so far, I'll look good. There's so much work behind the scenes that my staff did to make me look good, you know, that is just, you know, so dumbfounding to me that everyone's like impressed by me. Oh my God, from the research to make sure I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be and talking about the content I'm supposed to talk about too. I mean, there's just so much that, there's a lot of work to take me to, to look good. And, you know, I could sit there and, and, and be, you know, yeah, I mean, I got a standing ovation. I didn't get crap, you know? My staff got the standing ovation. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's really important for us to remember that and pay that forward by being who they expect us to be. Yeah. And the best testimony, and you have the same one, it, it, we all do. Um, this was taught to me, fortunately, about 10 years ago, or, or whether it was taught to me or, you know, I, I, I stumbled on it and it just, it worked for me. It was just one of those exercises that worked for me. And we've all had different, it doesn't matter which ones, whatever works for you. And thank God, because I started, you know, really following this 10 years ago, maybe a little bit more, maybe 11 or 12. And, you know, eight years ago, I lost my wife. Okay. So the reason why I say that is we all face obstacles, right? And they're all different. Um, but there are, you know, things that take the wind out. And I don't know, I have no idea um, how I would have, you know, handled it differently. But had I not been taught things like this and had great mentors in my life, I would have probably wanted to stick my head in the sand and say, woe is me and how unfair and, you know, what a victim I am. But I got three boys that I didn't have that right to do that to. I had 150, 200 employees that were looking at me and, and you know, question if they were in trouble for a job. And then I got, you know, hundreds, thousands of clients, you know, so thank God I had this. And, and, and the reason why I'm saying it is not to, to, to uh, talk about what I've overcome, but these, these habits I started, you know, 10 to 12 years ago served me through, you know, major times. And that's what they're for. They're not for when everything's going great. And we're up 20% year after year and, you know, everything's great. These are our habits to make sure they get you through the storms. Yeah. I mean, I love to say that, that success is an awful teacher and challenge builds character because character what builds your potential. And that's why we're always growing. We're always chasing that thing, that, that future excellence. John, amazing conversation. I want to thank you sincerely. And by the way, you look amazing <laughs> being here. Enjoy the weather, the 60 degree weather. Right? <laughs> Thank you. It was, it was always a pleasure. And, you know, with the people you have and the impact that you're having, um, it is humbling to be uh, one of your, your guests. So thank you so much. Thank you.